so quickly, that's in a, in, a, in a simplified way the GTFCC governance today, right? I oversimplify it, but essentially that's how we are organized. It's a bit um, uh, uh, simple. Uh, one of the issues in particular is that mixed and, and lack of clarity between uh, what is the GTFCC required versus what is the WHO uh, cholera team, and uh, there's been critics on this, and we have the the working group that we try to, to, to manage and, and produce what we're producing today. Uh, it, has, it was already, as, as Fru mentioned, discussed uh, uh, last year, and it appears very clearly that we really need to have a much more robust uh, mechanism uh, for coordination and, and, and for leadership and for support to countries. Uh, this is coming over and over again and was very clear uh, yesterday in the presentations uh, from countries and, 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 from, and from partners as well. well why? But because, as we always say, the, 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 the control of cholera is, is multi-sectoral by, by definition. So by definition, you need to have very strong coordination mechanism across sector, and that's true at the global level, but that's true, uh, uh, of course, as well at the country level, and that's one of the main difficulty uh, countries are, are encountering these days, not everywhere, but in several places. Um, um, it is also clear that the, the in, if, you, if you go back to the even the TORs of the, of the Global Task Force when it was revitalized, that one of the key functions uh, the key role of the task force is really to help countries uh, implement their, their cholera control plans. Uh, it was a great drive from the beginning, and, and, and then we need really to reinforce that. It's again in the WHA resolution, which was passed uh, last year and validated last year at our annual uh, meeting. And last but not least, uh, as we always say, that's, that's extremely important for all of us. Uh, the roadmap is really a country-driven process. It's not, it's not a top-down approach, and, 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 and we really need that capacity at the country level uh, to, to get things being operationalized, not just a new, uh, another strategy on the shelf like was put nicely by, by, the, by the group we did the GTSC review in, in 2017. So that's what we have agreed uh, last year, uh, essentially, um, uh, as a new uh, revised, upgraded, I would say, governance mechanism for the GTFCC uh, with three levels. The first level here with the steering committee, um, and, the gen and that meeting will become a sort of general assembly of the GTFCC. So that level will give a sort of overall uh, strategic direction for the for the for the for the global task force, the partnership in general. The second level, which will ensure the day-to-day, -day, I put it day-to-day -day management and coordination of activities. So uh, there is the GTFCC secretariat, and appended to it, uh, we'll discuss that in a minute, and you will discuss that in a group, uh, that independent review panel, and then two uh, two uh, parts here. One. Uh, called the country support platform that will ensure the support to countries in all aspects. And a second group, uh, and that, that's, uh, that is the WHO Cholera program, ensuring norms and standards and all the technical guidance on the uh, management of, of the different working groups. So that first level, that overall strategic direction, uh, we'll have the first meeting of the <coughs> steering committee tomorrow morning. Uh, and the steering committee will act like a, like a board would act in, in a company, in a private company uh, or in an NGO. Um, so responsible for the oversight, the strategic direction, uh, the accountability of the global task force as a whole. Um, that's the role of the role of the steering committee, which is going to be chaired by uh, by, by FRU, uh, is ready to uh, support and conduct the high-level advocacy at the global level. Um, they will review on a regularly. They will have to discuss tomorrow exactly how they will, they will operate, but essentially they will review regularly the activities of task force, achievement, uh, and make sure that this, this all remain on, on track, like, like a board will do. The initial members are listed here. Uh, we have this... It was one of the strong recommendations of last year to include also countries representative. And for the first, uh, uh, the first uh, group, we'll have Bangladesh representative and, and Zambia representative. 
uh, and we'll see how we, we, we set that up in details uh, in, the, in, the, in the future. Now, the, the second part of that overall strategic uh, level will be so the, the General Assembly uh, or the task force. Probably we need a larger room, so we'll see how we organize the Fondation Merieux, they can push a little bit the walls. Um, but it's, it's clearly an opportunity to review the progress, give the voice to countries. We have this year, I think, 12 countries present, uh, and, and the more countries we have, the better. You are going to discuss in the working groups how countries will uh, report on, on a yearly basis. They will report during that General Assembly. The second level is the day-to-day -day management. So the GTFC secretary, the IRP, the GTFC secretary shouldn't change too much the way it works today. They work under the supervision and report to the steering committee and ensure coordination between those two groups, uh, the, the WHO cholera program and the country support platform. Well, they essentially monitor on a daily basis the implementation of the, of the national uh, cholera plan. They'd, develop the, the advocacy, communication, fundraising strategy that will be presented uh, later uh, this afternoon and discuss with all of you. Organize all the meetings uh, and ensure the, the sharing of information between the, among the countries, among the partners, uh, essentially what, what we, we are doing today. So we, but we'll create that independent review panel. We, you will discuss that uh, just after, after that, uh, that session. It's essentially an, an independent uh, technical review mechanism made of a pool of experts from, from the GTFCC partners that will in particular review the, the national cholera plans, um, ensuring that they are well aligned and they, they are well aligned with the, with the global roadmap and have a certain number of criteria uh, that ensure a high quality of, of, of those plans. And um, the WHO cholera program, I think we, it's, it was important, I think, uh, as was uh, mentioned several times in the last meetings, to have a clear uh, understanding of what does the Secretary does and what the WHO program does. So the, in that, in that uh, upgraded uh, governance, the WHO cholera program really ensured that technical leadership uh, on guidance and standard development, managing the, the, the work, coordinating the work of the, of, the, of, the, of the working groups, and ensuring that those norms are better integrated with the WHO norms. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but all the guidance documents that we have developed until now, and there are about, I don't know, 10, maybe more, 11. Um, they are all, they are all uh, even the, that, that yellow book is all GTFC, it's not, there is no WHO label on it. Uh, it requires a lot of work to get that done, and that's something that we, we, we should try to do as well. And of course, this group also uh, coordinates the development of the, of the research agenda, like was mentioned uh, this morning uh, uh, by Charlie. Uh, an important addition, I think, as well, is that development, that establishment of that country support platform, uh, which is going to be essentially what I've called the operational arm of the task force. That's what's going to coordinate the support to countries, a very practical, concrete uh, support to countries, uh, helping them implement their national plan. So we are talking here of technical assistance, short, medium, long term. We need to have people in country for sometimes two weeks, but sometimes two years. Uh, so we need to really develop that capacity that's essential, particularly for the coordination, but also for the technical aspect. Uh, the second extremely important aspect of, uh, and support that we should be provided to countries is the support to the surveillance. It was mentioned several times, uh, a notification of hotspot, monitoring of progress, etc., etc. There is a role as well for national advocacy uh, and fundraising. We'll discuss that later this afternoon. Uh, and in general, multi-sectoral capacity building, as well as the support for the implementation of the research project. This country is not going to, to coordinate the, the research and develop the agenda, but really support the in-country uh, implementation of the project together with monitoring and evaluation. Importantly, this country support platform will be hosted by uh, partner agencies, we are trying to uh, avoid all the UN type of complications that I'm not going to detail here because otherwise I will stay here for a couple of hours. So um, we are trying really to get uh, 
simplify, flexible, easy access to that sort of support in terms of human resources, commodities, etc. So by hosting in a partner agency, that will that should help a lot. Last slide. Yeah. Uh, next steps. Uh, the next steps are first. So the first meeting of the same committee in uh, in that. Uh, place uh, tomorrow morning we'll uh, agree on the work plan for the next year essentially an operating process including uh, detailed uh, TORs for the for the steering committee then based on your feedback of the of the and uh, IRP and opponent review panel we'll create that IRP in the coming few weeks or months uh, composition of the group who is there how many people you will discuss all of this uh, who decides who select uh, how long does they stay in, in their role etc etc what are the procedures and in the coming few months i hope before the end of the year uh, inshallah uh, get the the country support platform up and running and um, that's something extremely extremely uh, essential for us and respond to very important uh, requests from countries thank you <laughs>